Hello, welcome back to the channel. So, I'm carrying on with the uh, land snakes journey and the rebasing of my land snakes. Now, the last video I uh, talked about how I put them originally on 4x4 four four bases. So, four land snakes to a base on a 20x20mm 20 20 base, which is pretty much how they tell you to organise them in um, Pike and Shot by uh, Warlord, the Warlord game Pike and Shot. So, but then I thought, well, I don't really want to do them like that anymore. I want to put them on big red bat bases. And so I started putting them on single big red bat bases that were uh, this size. And what I did was I placed them side by side on a big red bat base, um, pretty much like that. So you can imagine two, one, one side by side. Now, then what I realized was Lanchnecks didn't fight in um, lines, okay? They didn't fight in, you know, uh, 16 men uh, lines too deep. That's that's not what <laughs> how pipe blocks operate. So what I then did was I decided to stick the big rat bat bases together and put the Lanchnecks on a large pipe block. Just move things around a little bit. Uh, like this so you know the way they organize their pipe blocks was basically they were in um, companies of around 400 to 500 men within a regiment and they probably had around 10 companies up to 10 companies in a, in a regiment so a regiment was around 5,000 men organized into companies of around four, four to four, 500 men per company and those companies would make up the pipe block um, now there is a German word for the pipe block, and I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, might put it in the comments underneath. But essentially, they were pretty much organised in a, a group, a square, twenty by twenty men. Now, around the outside, they would have um, halberdiers. They would also have uh, zweihanders as well, the guys with the two-handed swords. Okay, um, and then they also have maybe missile troops as well. So. Uh, people with uh, arquebusier, but also crossbowmen as well, and they would go around the outside of the pipe block. They would obviously be used for missile fire for engaging enemy, and then they'd retreat into the pipe block into the protection of the pikes um, during the battle if they were assaulted. Um, the halberdiers and the zweihanders would also operate in a similar kind of way, but they would obviously be a more close contact group troops they would rush the pike blocks of opposing forces they would smash the pikes uh, and create an opening for the the uh, the Lanchnecks pipe block itself so they would then retreat into the pipe block as well so you know you've got kind of like a little organized uh, layering of around the block of missile troops as the troops troops with two-handed swords and also halberdiers as well now in the center of the pipe block you can just about see these guys. You would have the um, bannerman, the ensign. Okay, so the leader of the uh, company would be a captain. Now the companies were called fine lanes. Okay, that was the German name for them. But within the pipe block itself, right in the centre, you'd have the drummers and the fifers and the ensign with the banner. You probably see it a little bit better on this one. There he is. Okay, so you've got the ensign with the banner and the drummer in the centre of the pipe block. Now, obviously the drummer would be keeping time. Um, the the pipe block would be operating according to the beat of the drum. They would move, reposition, manoeuvre according to the beat of the drum and the fifes. Um, but the bannerman, the ensign, was usually quite an experienced uh, soldier. Also quite highly respected. Uh, and the banner itself would be highly prized and, and uh, protected by the company themselves. They would not want the banner to fall into enemy hands, you know, that, and the banner would be a source of um, pride, but also a place to rally within the uh, block itself. So it would be a rallying point within the pie block and also a position which you, you could basically c uh, control the block itself and issue orders from so very important role within the center of the pipe block now originally you know I was putting um, banners and 
um, drummers at the back or at the front. But after a little bit of reading, I realised that they weren't in that position at all. They were right in the centre of the pipe block, and that's where I placed them. So now I've organised my pipe blocks in terms of, of you can see that they're still on the 4x4 bases, but I placed them in organised in terms of 4x5 now. Okay, so I've got them 4x5 with the banner and the drummer in the centre, uh, with another pipeman at the sides, um, and that essentially now is the organisation of the pipe blocks. So they will be a fighting unit, that will be a standard unit in pike and shot. Um, but it will also be a single company uh, organised on the battlefield. So I'll have sev several of these companies. I won't. Ha I probably won't have ten, which would be the size of a regiment. I'll probably have maybe four or five. So I've done that with those guys. They're the regular Lanchnecks. I've also done it with the um, with the Black Guard as well, the, the Black Band as they were called. So these are my Black Band. I've also organised those into... I organised these into four by six actually because I've I had um, several bases for them, but I didn't want to leave any out. And then I've also got my bannerman, my ensign in the centre with the drummer next to the ensign as well. It's hard to see them now because they're <laughs> and I've got just got to put a um, a banner on that guy there. So there's the ensign and the drummer looking very stern. In the center there, and the ensign with his uh, sword, okay, kind of issuing commands and uh, rallying the troops in the center of the pipe block. Right, so I've got three blocks at the moment. I've got the black band and I've got two regulars. I've actually finished this one, this one is now complete and finished the basing on it banners in the middle but I'm also going to add another banner I'm going to add maybe two more banners to this as well um, because I just like loads of banners so although it's got the the you know the banner of the uh, company in the in the center as it should be I'm also going to put a couple of banners on the pikes um, I've got some much larger banners as well because the, the banner in the center is a little bit small um, but you know at least two more banners on these pipe blocks just to make them look a bit more impressive on the battlefield so how am I going to kind of overcome the idea of um, having um, Zweihanders and uh, Halberdiers and missile troops? Well, I've decided to... I also had these guys on 4x4 bases, okay? 40mm um, 40, 40 by 40mm. And now I'm sticking these onto Big Red Bat bases. So I'm putting them on the slightly smaller Big Red Bat bases. And I'm going to put them... I can use these now... Um, either as a single unit right so they can operate independently of the pipe block so if they want to leave the pipe block and maybe uh, you know as a forlorn hope maybe charge the enemy in that way the my handers can be used like that or I can use them as a small unit if I put two together that becomes a, uh, a standard unit in pike and shot but then I could also place them around the pipe block as well so you know if I want them to act in the way that they should do with the pipe block then I can place them around the pipe block itself so okay so maybe put them side by side around the pipe block so okay uh, they won't fit into the slots uh, around the bases but that doesn't matter that's okay and then behind them I could place another base, uh, which will slot into the back of the base, uh, and there we go. The, the big red back bases slot together quite nicely. So they could go around the sides of the pipe block. I'm going to do exactly the same with the arquebusier as well. So I could put four, four or five arquebusier on a base and put them at the sides as well. So the idea is that the the uh, Zweihanders, the halberdiers, the arquebusier. And the crossbowmen can go on smaller bases around the pipe block, supporting the pipe block, but then can also kind of break away from the pipe block and become uh, a independent unit by themselves. So I don't, I don't want to attach the um, Zweihanders and the Arquebusier and the missile troops to the pipe block itself. 
I want to keep them separate so I can kind of detach them when they're needed. So that is where I am with the um, with the lunch necks. So quite a few are getting painted up now. Um, I went for a more purplish colour for this group with the uh, yellow feathers. This group's a bit more mixed. And of course over here we've got the black band. They look really nice actually. I'm quite pleased with those. And uh, they're going to get finished the base enough on those. And I'll give you, uh, I'll show you how they they came out. And I obviously I can't I can't wait to put the uh, the flags on these. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. We uh, working towards quite a nice little regiment. Uh, so far, I've got three bases, three pipe blocks. I've got plenty of uh, Zweihanders. I've got um, at least three. Uh, units of arquebusier. I've got quite a lot of crossbowmen to paint up, and uh, I've also got at least enough troops, uh, enough uh, pipemen for a fourth pipe block. So we're looking at four pipe blocks, Zweihanders, arquebusier, and crossbowmen as well as part of this army. And I probably need to add some more halberdiers. Okay. So that's where we are then, and uh, I'm going to try and finish these off in the next few weeks. Probably get them done, um, well, it depends how busy I am. Probably maybe two, maybe three more weeks before these are complete. But I thought I'd just give you a little kind of check in, uh, a little bit of an insight into my thinking again. All right, and uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, hope you're having a good uh, week. And um, look after yourselves. And uh, if I don't see you at CrackCon 2, then I'll catch up with you soon. Okay, bye.